guys, my name is Howard Wimshurst. I make animations. I created a short film called Encounter and this, uh, this short series just takes a look at behind the scenes, how I made it and some things I learned along the way. In the last episode we looked at the ideation, pre-production and the research trip and other studies in reference in preparation for the production for Encounter. So in this video I'm going to recount the actual production of the animation itself. So for the pipeline, I've worked in quite a lot of personal animation projects so I was quite confident on how to run my pipeline. If you don't know, the pipeline is basically how you get through all the stages of the animation process to the final result. You need to be able to uh, have that in, a, in a, a process and then recreate that process for every single shot. A film is made out of scenes and scenes are made out of shots and you need a, a pipeline framework for each scene so that it turns out in the same kind of style so that there's a coherent nature to it. The animation pipeline moved between four major softwares. So the first one is TV Paint and this is my main software for frame by frame animation uh, and storyboarding and I found that the files started to get a bit slow in TV Paint uh, when they reached a certain size. So I split the files up for this project. Um, I had a total of five files uh, five TV paint files and then within each file there were about eight or nine shots and a shot is like uh, one camera position basically when the camera is set up in one place and it's running according to the animatic I count that as one shot so uh, each file was made up of eight or nine shots so I did have to go between lots of different TV paint files for Photoshop I used that for storyboarding, backgrounds as well as the promotional material, like the poster and the thumbnail. Oh man, this is uh, really satisfying. For After Effects, After Effects was for bringing the layers together. So I tend to work in layers and then I find that for the maximum control, I would export the TV Paint file in different layers and then bring them into After Effects. And then you have more control over the layers of the animation. I, I found that that was very good for compositing, basically. That's how compositing works in, uh, in After Effects. In Adobe Premiere, that was for bringing the individual shots together and synchronizing sound, foley and music and uh, exporting and encoding that. There were also ancillary softwares like uh, Mixcraft I used, uh, Audacity, those were both used for sound and Microsoft Excel was used to just organize the whole thing for production scheduling, keeping track on where everything is, like what stage they're all at and where my progress is and I was able to see that like the big picture of how far I had to go and how far I had come um, which is really important when you're working to a deadline. created a new version every time I made a major change so you can see some of the decision making process that I went through here, uh, which I like, I mean I like the composition and everything but things started changing with the story I wanted to then create some more mystery around this character I figured that the best way of doing that to cover the eyes because the eyes are like the window to the soul once you show someone's eyes you can sort of see a lot about them and it humanizes them so I took that away and there are these sort of Inuit style um, sunglasses that he's, he's wearing I also pushed him a little bit further back so that it's again adds to the mystery if we don't get close to him we can't see him like seeing him through the branches as well it lets us sort of see him but also there there's more to be left to the imagination gradually the head gets smaller and the body gets larger to create a more a slightly more intimidating figure more of a sort of uh, something that looks a little bit more like the grim reaper so it gave him another pose this time slightly more crouching slightly more focused but then i moved him back again so i'm kind of thinking about where he should be in the frame like how close to the camera and of course I moved to the more foreground elements, I started drawing in the foreground elements. I 
spent so much time on ideation and pre-production, uh, as you saw in the last video. Um, I only just managed to leave myself enough time to actually produce the animation, to actually animate and colour the film. So I worked flat out for a whole month to, to do that, and I mean, I really worked very hard on it. But when I say working hard, I also mean working smart. I chose to work smart, and I think that really counts for a lot more than working, just working hard and losing sleep. That's not how I see these things. I don't think working hard just to, equates to spending every hour on it and losing sleep. You need to be tactical, you need to strategize a, a, a plan. So I developed a way of living that was perfectly tailored to avoid burnout while still achieving maximum output. This meant maintaining the right amount of sleep, of nutrition, the right amount of exercise. Even when I was up against the deadline, I kept to this. And also forcing myself to not become nocturnal so that I could receive the psychological and physiological benefits of, of the sunlight. I honestly believe that implementing this lifestyle is one of the only ways I was able to meet my deadline on this project. Especially if you've got something that takes longer than a week, I would say. Um, what I've found for myself is that doing a, a work sprint where you, you sort of lose sleep and you just work every hour of the day, you can do that if the timeline is, is under a week. But anything beyond a week of work sprint, you have to approach it from a different way. You have to approach it in a more sustainable way, otherwise you will crash and burn by the end of it. It will mess you up, it will mess up your life uh, socially, mentally, physically, so you want to be professional, that's not how professionals do things. Here's my shot list for references and I've got a little tick box beside each one, I've got the scene number, and a short description and also some notes on where I can actually film these practically. So this is like my guide right now, I'm going to be ticking off the boxes as I go through them and uh, I've the, the ones that I'm doing are the ones with the more nuanced uh, expressions, the ones that uh, I need a human model for. And I'm going to be modelling, of course, because I can't get anyone else to do it, really. So um, there are one or two shots where I need someone's help, so those are going to be... Uh, I'm going to be doing them later. Back to using uh, TV paint. Using TV paint was really nice. I was able to give the film a more textured look and that's what I've been going for for a long time now. Uh, that's what was lacking, I feel, in the flash animations that I made is that it, they just didn't have that textured feel. Thank you very much to Insanium for helping me uh, when I had problems with TV paint where I didn't know how to do a certain thing because I was changing softwares and for, for helping me out with the brush pack and everything. He's been so, so helpful. So I'll leave a link to his blog uh, in the description. Really amazing artist. For shots like this where you've got all these intense lines, I'll just show you what it looks like right now. So many lines, like hundreds and hundreds of these lines and it's very intense. The, the way you draw needs to be in this effortless way which is in line with the way you hold your pen and the way you move your pen. Now you see this, to me, the way I do this is very effortless and the way I do this is very effortless. A little bit more dexterous, a little bit more precise, it's difficult, so you need to lose the precision. Align your pen and that lovely direction and to just be able to go like this. And you see, just like that I've built up a texture of line and it's got a certain character with it. Uh, which is is my character, you know, it's like that's my my lines are like You know, they've got my DNA sort of <laughs> Embedded in them from the way that it's like my signature, you know my signature you get the idea like it's kind of got me in there but you need to relax and to just let the pen and the hand, let the hand do the work for you. So I, I use the eraser in the exact same way. The eraser is like to sculpt the uh, the line. So once I've done it, you know, you can you can add, you can take away.
plus and minus, it's really the same thing. You're adding, you're taking away, you're adding. And then I just move it along. I understand that with perspective like this, things in the background, they appear to sort of move outwards from this point. My hand is very relaxed with the pen and, and it's just doing this little motion, this little shadow motion. And I pick it off the page at certain points to, to give it this texture. So, you know, it's not constantly on the page because that would look like this. And I do that for certain things, like for the trees, I sometimes do that, but it's kind of hitting the page every, ever so slightly. So yeah, that's just a little uh, demonstration of how holding the pen and using the pen and like the muscles you use in the pen and everything and aligning your, your hand. Uh, I mean, if you want to, you can actually rotate the canvas if you're in a program like TV Paint as well. That can be good or just, just moving your arm around to position your pen so it's always just, it's just able to do this all the time. Or if you can find a, a different one, like sometimes that can be all right, but, but really this one is just so powerful. Um, yeah, so this has been a demonstration on how I do that. Uh, really important, for, especially for intense scenes like this. I learned some great colouring methods on TV Paint and this was actually my saving grace. I didn't expect for TV Paint to have these very uh, sophisticated, really, sophisticated colouring techniques uh, in their software, to so colouring uh, tools. Um, and it actually ended up speeding up the process uh, massively when it came to colouring. Hikarian made a really good video on some of the uh, colouring techniques in TV Paint and that video really helped me to just learn the, the basics and then from there I sort of developed on those techniques covered in the video even more to make it even faster and, and more efficient. The music was coordinated by myself, uh, my dad, and Shainik. Uh, Shainik is my longtime collaborator, music collaborator. Um, I talked to Shainik about the track that I had in mind, a sort of, not a cover of Jimi Hendrix, but something similar in, in the vibe. I wanted it to have a sort of uh, haywire, energetic, badass uh, feel um, that, that I felt like Voodoo Child had. My dad's a professional guitarist as well. Um, he's like the best guitarist I know, which is uh, really handy for me when, when it comes to projects like this. <laughs> that's very driving. Is that alright? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounds great, yeah. He is much more used to playing sort of mellow music. But when I told him about the project and everything, and I asked for his help, he, he was excited to come on board and try something different. Yeah, really good. 
of course he absolutely killed it. I took my recording equipment to his studio and we messed around with different effects pedals to get the sound we wanted. That sounds good. That's quite good, it's got room on it. That well. sounds good, yeah. Shane and Kid created a backing track which we used and adapted. We took Shane X backing track, played it uh, through their headphones while we were recording and recorded the uh, lead guitar on top. I also contributed some of my own guitar playing to it. And then Shainik also uh, contributed some of his uh, sort of guitar solo skills. So we sent those parts back to America for Shainik to mix and master. And then Shainik joined in on the guitar solo to bring it all together. <laughs> So you'll be able to hear the full track of Shanix on his Bandcamp or on his SoundCloud. So I'm going to uh, put the link in the description, it's well worth you guys checking it out. It's a great track and you only heard a small part of that track in the film. So that this was such an awesome experience um, recording with my dad, it was kind of like a father-son <laughs> moment uh, which, was, which was really nice. It was one of the highlights of this whole project and it's inspired me to produce more music. I'm actually aiming to produce another album uh, in my spare time which will have tracks from me and uh, and also collaborating with people like my dad. It's kind of inspired me musically. This part was tough. Basically, I was animating as fast as I could, but there were too many shots to get done in time. Um, and at this rate, I wasn't going to get the film finished. So I had to make some drastic cuts to the film. I had tried to make some cuts to the film before, but they weren't enough. The film was still at something like three to three and a half minutes long, and there were just too many shots to get through. The, the way I did it, was I thought to myself, what if I was cutting a, uh, a commercial, basically a TV commercial, and it had to be under two minutes in length? How would I cut it theoretically? And with that thought in mind, I made an alternative file in Adobe Premiere, and I was just ruthless with the film. I cut out scenes that I had even, I had even started animating them. Like I did all the rough animation for them. I still cut them out. So it was a lot of time that I put in that you never saw in the film. And when I was done cutting, I, I, I had a new version of the film and I managed to keep the storyline intact despite the drastic cuts. I basically had to cut out anything that, all these sequences that were really nice, that would be really fun to watch, but unfortunately just didn't drive the story forward. Forcing myself to cut down on the film also forced out any shots that wouldn't need to be there even if they would have added something nice to the film. The, the result seems to be a film which is quite snappy. It gets to the point very fast and you need to pay attention the whole time or else you'll miss something important. That's just the style of the film in the end and I, I don't dislike that. I, I think it's quite good, really. It doesn't waste any time getting to the important stuff. Of course, it would have been better to do all of this cutting way earlier in the production but, you know, these things just don't go the way you plan them to and like I said in the last video, sometimes it's, you know, not a direct path towards the goal, like sometimes you have to take steps backwards to get there, sometimes you do have to delete work and the deleting it is actually for the best, you have to sort of strip away everything, almost like a sculpture, you know, you add bits of clay but you also take away bits and in that way you form it into the film that it is. If 
you found this video to be useful, insightful, if you enjoy my other videos, there's a way for you to help the production of these videos. I have a Patreon account. My supporters on Patreon are making a big difference to the production of these videos. So if you'd like to help me to sustainably create videos long into the future, then uh, Patreon is the best way for you to do that. It's very easy and it's very flexible for you. To my existing patrons right now, thank you so much. And if you wanna be notified of the next episode, which is going to come out uh, hopefully next week, then uh, please subscribe to the channel. Maybe click the notification button if you want to be notified of when that video uh, is released so that you don't miss it. Uh, see you in the next video, goodbye.